Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shira Newman, and I am the coordinator of uh, arts programming here at the Rady Jewish Community Center. I'm pleased to welcome you all to the 2022 edition of Music in Mavens. Uh, I'd like to thank of all of our sponsors, the Babs Asper Center for Cultural Arts, the Asper Foundation, Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, Winnipeg Arts Council, United Way, Manitoba Arts Council, the Lamp Family Fund, Winnipeg Free Press, Jewish Post and News, Classic 107, and our individual donors for your financial support and commitment to our 2022 Music and Maven series. The Radio Jewish Community Center is located on Treaty Number One territory, the traditional land of the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota people, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Before we start with today's presentation, I'd like to go over just a couple of uh, house housekeeping items. One, while we anticipate there will be no technical issues during our presentation, please remember this is live and despite our best efforts, we may have some glitches and we will work swiftly to correct any unforeseen issues. And two, we will be taping today's session um, and I will be making it available for viewing and we'll be making it available for viewing on the Rady JCC Music and Mavens YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much for being here. We're glad to be with you today. I'm now gonna turn things over to Carla Burbrayer, Music and Maven's founding producer. Hi, well, thank you, uh, Shira, for your introduction uh, to the Music Maven series. And yes, hi, my name is Carla, for those of you who haven't met me before. And I'd first like to start by saying congratulations. You've made it to the end of January. Yay! <laughs> Just one more month to go before we can start contemplating spring. And I think that if we were doing this live, we might have had a hard time getting some of you down to the Rady. So things have a way of working out at some times. Now, as many of you know, when we have our live speaker presentations, we always offer our patrons a cup of coffee or tea and a cookie to go with it. Our wonderful volunteers are usually in there making sure that everybody's seated with their coffee or tea. And you know who you are. I see some of you on, on the line today. Well, unfortunately, we can't do that today, but I hope that you are settled into your home with a cozy mug of some warm beverage for today's talk. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jenny. Jenny Sackleback is the owner of Coffee with Jenny B Media and host of the podcast Coffee with Jenny B. Passionate about coffee since a young age, she created her business after being inspired by the 60 Days of 60 Coffees journey she embarked on in 2019 to commemorate her 60th birthday, which means we all know how old you are, Jenny. <laughs> A communications program graduate and respected instructor of the University of Winnipeg PACE program, which stands for Professional Applied Continuing Education. Jenny has over 30 years of marketing and communications experience, including event planning and fundraising for financial, technical, and nonprofit organizations. She continues to carry her love of learning and teaching to her students, her fans, her followers, and I've noticed she has quite a few of those, as she regales them with coffee stories, history, and folklore. Floor. A long-standing member of the Peak Performers Toastmasters Club since 1997 and a Zumba instructor since 2010, currently teaching online, Jenny is also the mother of two and a proud and doting grandmother of one. Jenny's mission is to continue to spread her infectious energy, enthusiasm, and warmth to others in the spirit of everything coffee. Welcome to Music and Mavens, Jenny B. Thank you so much, Carla, and thank you to the Rady Jewish Center for having me as part of the Music and Mavens program. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have had your caffeine fix today? Okay, I'm glad to see that because for me, I always need my caffeine fix. I love my coffee in the morning. It's actually the first thing that I do when I get up is have my coffee, cup of coffee. And then sometimes depending on how the day goes, I might have another one at lunchtime. And if we go up for dinner in the evening, then it's an after dinner coffee. Now I know a few people have thought that, well, that's too much caffeine and you know, what if I can't sleep at night? But you know what? Caffeine has never ever bothered me. I mean, I guess if I drank a whole pot, 
it might give me a little bit of the jitters, but I find that caffeine actually gives me energy. That's where I get all my energy. And I wanna talk about all the different benefits of coffee. So not just the idea that coffee gives you energy, but coffee connects us together. One of my favorite sayings is life happens over coffee. And it's true because when you think about opportunities that you have meeting each other, you know, when you are at work, you have coffee. Carla alluded to the fact that if this was in person, you would have coffee, tea and, and cookies, perhaps. When you say to somebody on a first date, meeting a friend, you, the, the first thing you say is, let's go for coffee. Let's meet for coffee. And even if you're not a coffee drinker, you're meeting for coffee. And so it's a way to connect with each other. It's a way to form that relationship. And coffee also allows you to connect with yourself because I find that when I need that time out, when I need that time taken away from work and just find some time for me, I'll make myself a cup of coffee. And you know what I'll do is instead of making a pot of coffee that I usually make in the morning because my husband also likes to have coffee during the day, I might do a pour over and that is taking the time to boil the water, putting it into a gooseneck kettle, putting the coffee into the filter, and then slowly pouring that boiling water over that coffee and watching it slowly drip into the container. And that can take about three minutes. And during that whole time, I am in a more mindful, almost a meditative state as I watch the coffee bloom in the grinds and see that beautiful liquid forming in the bottom. Sometimes I'll make an espresso. Now I don't have an espresso machine at home, but what I like to use is a mocha pot. Now those are the Italian coffee pots that you put on the stove. And that's an entirely different way of making coffee, but it's the same process because you are taking your time to prep the mocha pot, having the water boil, having the coffee brew, and then enjoying the fruits of your labor, so to speak. Coffee is one of those magical things. Now it's more, I mean, I've been talking about how to prepare coffee, how I enjoy coffee, but it's more than just that cup of coffee. Coffee is part of our, our culture. When you think about shows like Friends or Seinfeld, they all feature coffee. They meet at a coffee shop. There are movies that talk about coffee, songs, books, coffee cups like this one, coffee on clothes, coffee cards, even coffee paintings, believe it or not. And so coffee is so much part of our lives that we don't even stop to think about the fact that coffee is a part of it. And so how did I get started with my coffee journey? Well, as Carla mentioned in, my introdu in her introduction of myself, when I was turning 60, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, do I go on a trip? Do I have a party? How do I celebrate? you know, such a milestone. And just the idea popped into my head, why not do 60 days of 60 coffees? Because I love coffee, so it seemed like the best thing for me to do. But how do I go about that 60 days journey? I didn't know that we had enough coffee shops available at that time. So I did my research, I made my list of all the coffee shops I was gonna visit, and then I visited a different one every day. 60 days of different coffees, different coffee shops, different stories. And I posted on my personal Instagram page at Jenny Sackleback, pictures, stories, the coffee, the people behind the coffee. And what surprised me about my journey is that I learned so much about the rich and diverse coffee scene in Winnipeg and in Manitoba as well. But more importantly, 
I learned a lot about myself. I learned that, first of all, I could follow through and do something for 60 days in a row. <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit, but sometimes it takes a long time to get that habit. And so for me, it was a victory of sorts that I could finish this journey. But what it also did for me is it reignited a love of writing because I've always been a writer but I, I hadn't done it for a number of years. And so this was an opportunity to get my creative, uh, sorry, my, get my creative juices flowing and get me really inspired by what's going on in the coffee world. And that also led me to think about how I could, could continue my coffee journey. And so in 2020, I decided that I was going to do something with coffee. And I came up with the name Coffee with Jenny B because that's coffee and I'm Jenny B. But COVID hit and all my plans were put on hold. But I never let that idea escape from me. It, would, it was basically put into a bit of a hibernation until 2021. And then I thought, you know, I need to do something with my idea. What am I going to do with Coffee with Jenny B? And then the idea popped into my head again, why not do a podcast? I love talking. I'm a member of Toastmasters. So why not do a podcast? But what's funny about that is that I've never done a podcast. I, I mean, it's one thing to do a speech every now and then, but to do it on a regular basis every week and commit to doing it was an entirely different story. But I thought, you know, I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, then at least I've given it a shot. So going through the journey of creating that podcast, coming up with the music and the, the ideas. And at that time, I hadn't even thought about interviewing people. I just thought, you know, it's going to be me talking about my, my journey, my coffee, and everything that brings me joy. But as it evolved, I found that I wanted to interview people. I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to share their love of coffee, their knowledge about their particular business, their service, their products, whatever it is. I wanted to share that with the world. And I became more comfortable in doing that and finding a different voice for myself. And some of the amazing interviews that I've had are coffee roasters in Winnipeg and also in Manitoba as well, because one of my interviews was with Colleen from Stone City Coffee Roasters in Steinbach. So it's not just Winnipeg, it's also Manitoba. Oh, and actually it's outside of Manitoba as well, because another interview I had was with Terry from Prairie Lily Coffee Roasters in Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. That, that really opened and expanded my horizons. So instead of just thinking about Winnipeg, which of course is very important because we have so many coffee roasters, so many coffee shops, it's just amazing how, again, rich and diverse the coffee scene is in Winnipeg and in Manitoba. Now, you might be wondering why coffee is so important to me. Well, I first started my love of coffee when I was a teenager going to high school. We would sneak out and go to the A&W just down the road from our school. We'd sit in the back booth and we'd drink black coffee, eating curly fries with seasoning salt, and we thought we were so cool drinking that coffee. And then we didn't have the cafes that we have today and when I was at home, we drank Sanka. Now, for, for some of you who don't know what Sanka is, it's instant coffee. It's, ugh, I would never drink it again, but back then that's what we drank. And then I discovered Starbucks. It's like, oh my goodness, Starbucks was this, this mecca of coffee goodness. And I fell in love with the different types of coffees that are available. And it really opened up my eyes 
and opened up my palate to what was available. And in fact, I love Starbucks so much that I actually worked as a barista for four years. Yes, I was working full time and then working part time 20 hours a week as a barista at Starbucks. And I did that for four years. That was another way of educating me about the world of coffee because I got to know more about how coffee is produced, how to make coffee, dealing with customers, sharing your love and your knowledge of coffee with them. And it's funny because my favorite thing to do at Starbucks when I was working as a barista was working behind the bar. And that meant that I was actually making those espresso drinks. And even today, I'll see people that were regular customers and I still remember what their drink was because it made such an impact on my life working as a barista and getting to know more about the coffee business. But getting back to what I had said earlier about coffee not just being that cup of coffee. So let's talk about the journey of where that cup of coffee comes from. So when you think about the countries in the world that produce coffee, there are 70 countries in the world and they're all located around the equator belt. So it has to be the perfect growing climate for growing coffee. So they produce and export the coffee. There are coffee farms. So the farmers grow the coffee beans that they either sell as green beans or they sometimes will roast them, but typically it's selling the green beans that producers or coffee roasters will get the green beans. Then they will roast them according to the different recipes that they have, the different types of roasts. Could be a light roast, which medium roast, medium dark roast, and the dark roast. Now, speaking of the different roasts and the caffeine, did you know that the light roast coffee actually has more caffeine? I know you think that the darker roast does, but it's actually the light roast. And then the coffee roasters provide the coffee to the coffee shops. So it all starts with the farms, the suppliers, the coffee roasters, the coffee shops, and then you as the consumer enjoying that cup of coffee. But why does it make such a difference to talk to you about this coffee journey? Because when the coffee farmers are producing the coffee, it's not just to support themselves, which of course is important, but it's supporting the community. It is providing schools, it's providing services, it's basically supporting the town. So your two, four, five, whatever money, whatever cost you're paying for that cup of coffee is supporting the farm, is supporting a village in Rwanda, is supporting a village in Peru, is building and sustaining a community. So when we talk about connecting, we're connecting with the farmers, we're connecting with the roasters, we're connecting with the coffee shops, and we're connecting with each other. And it all comes full circle. I love red wine. I, I have no problem <laughs> paying nine, 10, $13 for a glass of red wine. And would I pay the same for a cup of coffee? You bet I would. Because there's no difference in enjoying a beautiful full body glass of wine or a beautiful full bodied cup of coffee once you know where that coffee came from. And for me, sharing my love of coffee, educating people about coffee, sharing the story about coffee is so important to me because it's sharing my love of coffee. It's wanting to connect and talk to people and to get them to love coffee as much as I do. Although 
I'm not sure that's possible because I'm, I'm a huge, huge lover and so passionate about the world of coffee. And so I want to ask you another question. If you haven't had a chance to try the number of different cafes in Winnipeg or in Manitoba, why not? Go outside your comfort zone. Visit cafes in the Exchange District. St. Boniface has a number of wonderful cafes. The Forks, downtown, actually every single neighborhood in Winnipeg and most of the little towns and bigger towns in Manitoba all have a plethora of cafes and coffee shops. And these owners and baristas would love to have you as one of their customers. And in some cases, when you are visiting a coffee shop, you become an extended member of that family. For me, this is a labor of love. This is an opportunity to share, again, my love, my passion, the information that I was able to learn about the different coffee shops, what I've been able to learn about myself, and how much I've grown with my podcast. And what I did last year is I actually registered my business. So Coffee with Jenny B Media, which gives me an opportunity to do some fun things with coffee. So having a coffee tour, a coffee night where you can learn more about coffee and actually be your own barista. Last year at Christmas time, I did a coffee advent calendar where I connected with roasters and provided the different types of coffees to people who bought my calendar and who shared with me that they were so surprised at how many different roasters were in that calendar. And that's just, that's just a small sampling of all the roasters that are out there. And for Valentine's Day, I decided that I was going to put together a chocolate and coffee box. Now imagine chocolate and coffee, that's a beautiful combination. And there's so much more that I wanna do about coffee, about sharing again, my love, my passion, and educating people on why they should love coffee as much as I do. And so if you get a chance to visit one of the different coffee shops at one of the many coffee shops in Winnipeg or Manitoba, or get a chance to listen to my podcast, Coffee with Jenny B, available on Spotify, Apple, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and learn more about the roasters, about the coffee shop owners, and a little bit about what brings me joy and everything in between. Thank you so much for hearing my story, learning about my journey with coffee, and hopefully I've inspired you to take that journey yourself. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. And uh, I'm going to open this up now that I did send a, a snap, uh, not a snap, but a chat to everybody that uh, if you do want to message me directly, you can, and I can present a question to Jenny, or you can raise your hand and, and <laughs> unmute yourself and we can take turns talking. I'm going to start with uh, letting Jenny know that I, I really loved the way you described the process of making coffee, Jenny. And, uh, you know, when you were talking about it, it was almost as if you could smell the coffee. Yes. And I, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, the smell of the coffee. And I also, just before we continue, I, there's a bit of a sound in the background and I'm not sure, I think everybody else is muted, but I'm not sure if it's coming from, from your system or not, or if it's just me hearing it. So I just wanted to to flag that that sound. I don't know if anybody else is hearing it or if it's just me. It, oh, yeah. um, it could be that the, the furnace is on. So it maybe it's that, yeah. Got it, then no worries. Okay, so yeah, maybe you could talk a little bit about the smell of the coffee and also the selection of the mug of the coffee. Oh, that's okay, maybe that. So 
I'm not sure if you knew, but the taste of the coffee is actually in the aroma. Because you, you get the aroma. Well, first of all, let's talk about when you open your bag of coffee beans and you get that aroma from the beans. And then when you brew your coffee, depending on what method, it doesn't matter what it is, and you pour yourself that cup of coffee. And before you take that sip, you're smelling that aroma from that coffee. And so your taste buds all are anticipating what that coffee is gonna taste like. Now, the best way to get the pure, true flavor of coffee is to drink it black. And I would recommend if you were going to do that, get it the freshly roasted and brewed right away or, or soon after you get that freshly roasted bag of coffee beans. And then that's where you get that, that beautiful flavor. I like adding a little cream to my coffee just because um, that's my little treat. But drinking it black is really how you get all the different tasting notes. And if you want me to, to tell you what tasting notes are, I'm happy to do that as well. But when it comes to coffee mugs, it's a personal preference. Uh, I did an episode actually on all my collection of coffee mugs. And so depending on the day, I might choose this mug or that mug, or it just really depends on, on my mood that day. You know, sometimes I want like that big cup of coffee, you know, so I've got this huge mug. And then other days it's like, you know what? I just want a half a cup and then I'll have another half a cup. <laughs> so it really just depends on your mood. So Jenny, I see a question that has popped up that um, there is somebody who has asked if you could possibly share your top five coffee shops in Winnipeg with the group. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. So um, my top five in, in no particular order are Colossimo's on Provence, Harrison's at either the Forks location, so Johnston Terminal, and there's also Waterfront, Seven Cafe on Wall Street, Cafe Postal on Provence, and the fifth coffee shop is Made Coffee and Stuff on Corden. So those are my top five, again, in no particular order. And I take turns visiting those five coffee shops. Although I have visited others, um, there's the Yellow Dirty on St. Mary's Road. There, um, there's the O Station Cafe uh, at the junction of, well, Confusion Corner, so everybody knows where that is. Uh, so there's a number of different coffee shops that I like to visit, but these are the ones that I tend to frequent more often. Wow. Well, I have to point out that Colossimo coffee is served at Schmoozer's Cafe in the Asper Jewish Community Campus at the Rady Center. Really? So that if anybody wants to come to the Rady and have a cup of Colossimo's, it's right there at Schmoozer's. That's great. That's good to know. Yes. <laughs> There are definitely some that I haven't heard of, that I haven't frequented before, the, the Seven Cafe on Wall Street, for example. Uh, there's another question that's popped up. Um, how many local roasters, Jenny, do you know of in Winnipeg? Oh my goodness. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I don't have an exact count just because there are so many coffee roasters. You get the, um, so Harrison's Roaster Coffee, Colossimo's, um, there's um, uh, there's Stone City Coffee Roasters, there's other brother roasters in Winkler, there's uh, in Gimli, there's Flatland Coffee Roasters, um, and there's small, there's Crowded Table Coffee, there's uh, Mugging Whales, there are so many different roasters, uh, Garage 41 in Dauphin, um, there's an empty cup that, that roasts so others. So, and a lot of these coffee roasters also have their own coffee shops. So Harrison's, for instance, Colossimo's, um, Empty Cup, for instance, uh, Flatland Coffee Roasters, they have their coffee shop in Gimli. You know, I, I don't know because you know what? There are coffee roasters opening up all the time, all the time. Every, every time I, I check and there's a new one that's popped up and it's like, oh, I have to go visit them or I have to go try their coffee. Um, there's never better coffee. Um, so Jordan was doing just like a little pop-up on uh, Market Avenue, and now he's he's got his own place. Uh, I believe is it's on. I want to say it's on Corden. I'm not. I can't remember if it's Corden. I think it's Corden. 
but coffee shops, coffee roasters, they're opening up all the time because you know what? Everybody needs to coffee. Everybody drinks coffee. Everybody loves coffee. So we need our coffee. <laughs> okay. So here's another question. What was it about the coffee community in Winnipeg, particularly that got you motivated? Well, you know, it was, it was a number of different things. It was the care and attention that they put to the detail. So for instance, one of my, one of my um, 60 days of 60 coffees journey was parlor on main street. And I was talking to Alex who was behind the counter. Now, most staff that work at a coffee shop are, they call themselves baristas because that's what, well, that's what they are. But Alex said, I prefer to refer to myself as an artisan. So when you think about an artisan, they're creating art, they're creating music, they're creating magic, they're creating something beautiful. And for Alex, it's creating art and something beautiful in that cup of coffee. Because he said that where Perler is located, so when the door opens, the air comes in. So either it's cold air in the winter or it's perhaps muggy, hot air in the summer. And so when he is grinding the coffee beans for the coffee, he has to adjust the grind to make sure that you are getting that perfect cup of coffee. And that really inspired me thinking that that care and attention to what the customer is getting. So it's not like, you know, here you go, here's your cup of coffee. It's more of a here is this beautiful cup of coffee that I made for you with love because you can taste the love in the coffee. So somebody has asked if you could uh, make a list of the coffee roasters, but I think that might be a little challenging unless you were to post it on your site, but it's, I, will post that. I will post that on. Okay. Um, yes, I will do that. <laughs> okay. That would be wonderful. Now, another question that's popped up is what are your thoughts on fair trade? Fair trade, absolutely. Uh, it, fair trade, I was talking about the farmers that um, they, they rely on, on suppliers and roasters buying their coffee beans. It's fair trade. It's making sure that the workers are being paid fairly, that the farmers are getting also reimbursed fairly for, for, their, for their efforts. It is making sure that everyone is treated fairly and equally across that coffee chain. So yes, fair trade is very important. And it's, it's understanding and it's knowing the farms where the coffee is coming from. Because when you talk to any number of the coffee roasters in Manitoba, they will tell you who the farmers are. They will tell you the names of the farmers, their kids, and the, the community. They will talk about the type of coffee. I know that uh, Luann from Jacked Up Jill, she actually visited, I believe she said that they went to Costa Rica and actually met and worked. And it was a woman's collective that, so it's women who are coffee farmers in a collective making the coffee. And so coffee roasters will invest. They are investing their business. It, it, coffee, coffee has just gone up in price because of what's happened all over the world. And so they're paying more money for their coffee. And so they want to make sure that they are getting the best coffee beans possible, that they are supporting the farmers. They're supporting the roasters, supporting the coffee shops. Everyone is invested in this coffee business. So yes, supporting the farmers, supporting everyone is very important to me. Well, I can certainly attest to that uh, story about Costa Rica because I've been to Costa Rica and I actually thought it was one of the best coffees in the world that I had there. It's my dream to go there one day and visit a coffee farm. That's my dream Absolutely. one day. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, some other questions coming in, Jenny. What, you know, you mentioned that red wine is like drinking coffee. You made that comparison. The chocolate and coffee have a, have a connection. What is your favorite food that you love to have when you're having coffee? And a, and a two-pronged question was, this person also asked, have you ever tried Vietnamese coffee? Okay, so Two in questions. answer to the first question, the favorite, believe it or not, the favorite thing that I like to have with my coffee is peanut butter and jelly on toast. <laughs> That's what I have 
up in the morning with my coffee. But if I'm if I'm out, let's say at um, Colossimo's, uh, La Belle Baguette has their croissants. There's nothing better than oh, there's nothing better than a flaky croissant with a cup of Cafe Dante. That that's also one of my favorites. And yes, I have tried Vietnamese coffee. Um, actually, one of the um, one of the sixty days of sixty coffees journey was um, Maison. Uh, it was I forget Maison something uh, that they were in the West End, but of course because of COVID they've closed down their doors. But um, but yeah, I had uh, Vietnamese coffee there, and I've also had Turkish coffee. So that was one of my sixty days on Christmas Day because there were other. Uh, number of coffee shops are closed and so I went to a Lebanese restaurant and had Turkish coffee and you couldn't sleep for three days afterwards no I was I was buzzing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh something else that's popped up is the idea of connection over coffee that it that the that the coffee cup itself sometimes just represents the connection and that you know it I know that this is about coffee, but someone has said, could you use tea in that same way that you use coffee as a method of connection? Oh, of course. Uh, you know, I just say coffee because I'm all about coffee, but absolutely tea, hot chocolate, um, chocolate milk, <laughs> whatever it is that, you know, it's, it's not even about the beverage. It's not about the coffee cup. It's not about that. It's, it's, a, it's an excuse to get together, you know? So when someone says, let's meet for coffee, all that means is I want to spend time with you. So it, it really, the, the, the beverage itself is irrelevant. It's, it's, the, it's the connection. It's making sure that you are making time to be with those that you love, your friends, your family, and sharing that connection with each other. How has the pandemic affected your uh, your love of coffee? Uh, well, um, as I mentioned, I had to you know postpone doing my podcast. But um, you know what? If I couldn't get out to uh, to get coffee, coffee can be delivered to your home, and sometimes on the same day. So if you want to, and and sometimes to coffee shops, depending on the different coffee roasters, they might have a minimum. Uh, that you have to spend for coffee or they will deliver free of charge and so you don't even have to leave your house a number of places actually have a subscription service so you can sign up for three six months however long and you get a cup of you get a pound of coffee every month you know colossums they have a coffee club where you just you know and until you tell them stop don't bring me any more coffee you get a you get your coffee every month and so you don't have to leave the home it delivered to your door you got the coffee good to go so yeah it didn't affect me at all i just saw i i when you and i were chatting before we uh, went on uh jenny i mentioned to you i saw a meme on facebook this morning that said coffee tastes better in paris <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I wondered, you know, your thoughts of the actual environment, because, you know, now you're talking about how coffee can be delivered to your home, but the, the different feeling of going to a place that makes you feel special just because of that place. Yeah, you know, and, and you're right, Carla. I mean, we'd all love to go to Paris or Rome, you know, sitting at a little cafe and sipping our espresso or, or, or you know, a cafe, a cafe latte, you know, or... Um, uh, Cafe au lait in Paris. But when you go to a coffee shop, and maybe it's one that you've frequent for um, a long time, and they know your name. You walk in, and they say, hey, Carla, nice to see you again. Um, would you like your regular coffee? And you might say, yeah, absolutely. So they know that you take a little bit of cream and just a, you know, little sprinkling of sugar. Or you might say, you know what, why don't you surprise me today? and then they create this beautiful concoction for you. And so the special feeling that you get is being treated not just as a customer, but again, as a valued member of the extended family. So you're a member of the coffee family. And there's nothing like 
walking in and somebody saying, hi, Jenny, how are you today? Oh, I'm great. Nice to see you too. What would you like today? Or I've got your favorite coffee on tap. How about trying that? And you feel like, oh, you know, you, you feel special because you have that acknowledgement. You are more than just someone walking through the door and grabbing a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Now, there are certain areas of the city where there can be two coffee shops on the same street, for example, Colosimo and Cafe Postel are very close to each other in St. Boniface. Does that cause competition between these two local coffee shops? That's a very good question. And, you know, and it's interesting because when I was talking to Jay one day, we were actually talking about that same thing. And he said, we're all in business together. We're all in the coffee business together. But even though we sell coffee, every single coffee shop does it a little differently. They have their different blends. They have their different uh, roasts of coffee. They have their different types of coffee that they serve. He said, it's more that we support each other. So if one coffee shop is having difficulty with a machine or, you know, um, let's say they, they want to collaborate. Um, so for instance, last weekend, uh, Matthew from Railway Roasters came in to be the guest, um, not, not barista, but the guest coffee roaster with Jay. And so Matthew served his Railway Roaster coffee, caboose coffee at the Colossumos on Provence. And so there's collabs that are going on. It's supporting each other. You know, yes, there is competition, but it, so many people love coffee. So, I mean, I could, I could have a cup of coffee at Jay's and then go down the street to Cafe Postal, or I can just pop over to Harrison's and have another cup of coffee. And so it's, it's, it's about a connecting again, the coffee community and supporting each other because sometimes life happens, you know, things happen and it's rallying together and making sure that we're making sure that the customers, the extended coffee family still get their coffee. So you mentioned that you were a barista for four years at Starbucks. Yes. Now that is not a local coffee shop. And there are some people that would feel that um, going to a Starbucks is, is not supporting the Winnipeg coffee culture. How, how do you feel about that now? That's another good question. You're right, Starbucks, um, Starbucks originated in Seattle and there are Starbucks locations all over the world. And yes, it, it's, it's a chain of coffee shops. But when you think about who is working at the coffee shops in, and at the Starbucks locations, it's people from Winnipeg that are working there and offering their coffee. And one thing that I liked about Starbucks and that I also learned more about during my 60 Days of 60 Coffees is that attention to the customer service. So the reason Starbucks uh, created Starbucks was that third place. You know, first place is your home, second place is your work or school, third place is where you can go and relax. You can listen to music, you can sit in an easy chair, you can do your homework, you can read a book, you can have a coffee date with someone, and you can feel that there's no pressure for you to hurry and move away. And with the coffee shops in Winnipeg, the cafes and the roast and the coffee shops now, again, you get that same customer service, you get that same attention to detail and that same feeling that, you know, unless we're closing our doors at four o'clock, you can stay as long as you like and enjoy your coffee. But getting back to, yes, yeah, Starbucks is not local Winnipeg coffee shop and they don't get their coffee from within Winnipeg. They get it actually brought to them um, from Starbucks Canada, actually. Um, I believe it's in, in Toronto. But Starbucks has been around, so it's one of those iconic type of places. But what's interesting is that because of COVID, I mean, COVID affected Starbucks as well, and they had to close a number of locations. So there used to be a Starbucks on Academy, and that's actually where I first started working as a barista. And when they close that up, guess who's going in that location? Empty yeah. Cup. Empty Cup is opening their location on Academy in the old Starbucks location. 
in, I, I believe later this month, I want to say February 14th, perhaps. And so it, it, life happens, COVID happens, and it affects everybody, but it's how you rebound. It's how you can um, make something beautiful out of something that perhaps wasn't as beautiful. True. That's, that's, that's very true. And I'm just excited to chase that new um, coffee shop when it opens in the old Starbucks location. So another question that's come up is, do you have a favorite coffee shop in rural Manitoba? Ooh, well, I would say that there is uh, Flatland Roasters, so Flatland in Gimli. So every time I'm out in Gimli, I always stop and have coffee there. And there is um, it's, it's not technically a coffee shop, but in Selkirk, Manitoba, there's a, it's a tea shop called 36 Tea, where they serve, uh, I think, uh, I want to say Michelle said they have 170 different types of tea. So 170 wow. different types of tea. And she was one of my um, episodes uh, for my podcast. And I was, and it was, it, it was part of my 60 days journey. And I happened to be working in start in Selkirk that day, and it was uh, it was cold. I think it was um, sort of later in December, and I thought, oh, I've got that long drive back to Winnipeg, so I, I thought I'll, I'll just stop at 316 and grab some tea to go. And to my surprise, they were serving coffee, and their coffee comes from Red Lake Coffee. Yes, and so I had an Americano there, and so whenever I'm in Selkirk. I always stop at 360 so I can have them in an Americano. Now, it's interesting you asked me about my favorite coffee shop in rural Manitoba because after my 60 days, and of course early 2020, I was going to do um, a six, not a 60 days, but I was going to do a rural coffee trip. I was going to go to Brandon, Forbidden Flavors, um, Other Brother Roasters and Winkler. Um, you know, there's so many different ones in rural Manitoba. And then of course COVID hit and I wasn't able to do it, but it's still on my radar that I want to do a rural coffee tour. So a corollary to that last question is another question that came up. Do you have a, a favorite coffee shop internationally, somewhere in the world that stands out in your mind that you went, oh my goodness, I wish I could go back there again. Yes, um, my husband and I love to go to Mexico. And in fact, uh, we've been going to the same place. So we go to, it's called Rincon de Guaybitas, which is an hour and a half north of Puerto Vallarta. So you fly into Puerto Vallarta and you take a, a bus and it takes you through the jungle and you go past um, Bucherias and Nuevo Vallarta. And it's this little fishing village. And uh, we stay at an all-inclusive resort, but we love to go and you know walk around town and whatnot. There's a little coffee shop that is about a 10 minute walk from our hotel. And I would go there every day and have my coffee. And I can't remember the name of the, the coffee shop, but that that's where I would go in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, question, uh, Jenny, when you were stopping for coffee at these various places during the time that you were doing your 16 days of 16 coffees, yeah. uh, would you tell them places that you stopped at that you were doing a podcast or would you just stop in and have a coffee? Were they aware that they're being written oh. up and commented you know, on? I, yes, actually, that's what I would do is I would tell them, I said, hi, you know, I'm um, I'm doing my 60 Days of 60 Coffees journey and um, I'm, I'm here to have coffee with you. And so then I would ask questions. I would say, um, you know, so how long have you been here and what kind of coffee are you serving? And, you know, I want to find, a, you know, it wasn't just you know, I came here and I had coffee and that was it. And uh, I wanted to provide a lot of information about my experience being there. You know, I wanted to talk, and, and in, in most cases, I would take, I would try to take a picture either with um, a barista there or maybe the coffee shop owner, or if they weren't around, I would hold up a cup with the logo so that they could see that, you know, here's the logo or the name of the coffee shop that I was at. And I would tell them ahead of time that that's what I was doing but I would never ask for them to pay for my coffee. And my husband said, he said, well, you're, you're promoting them on Instagram. Like, why wouldn't you get them to pay for it? And I said, well, that wasn't the purpose of my doing this. The purpose of me doing this was for myself. I wanted to experience the, the pleasure of visiting 60 different coffee shops. 
And if they offered it to me and said, you know, here, you know, enjoy this coffee on us, I would gratefully and gracefully say, yes, thank you. I appreciate that. But I would never ask to, and because it's a business, you know, I'm happy to pay for a cup of coffee to support that business. Oh, I'm sorry, well, you mentioned one place though. I do, I, they're no longer in business, unfortunately, but when I started to ask questions, she's like, why are you asking me questions? And she was like, really suspicious. And I'm like, it, it's all good, it, you know? And then I had to just kind of like back away and it's like, you know, and then I had to find out information, you know, off their website and <laughs> social media. But, but she's like, why are you asking me questions? It's like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> Wow. Well, Jenny, I, I think that we may have gathered questions from many of the attendees this afternoon. Oh, I don't know if there's anybody else who had wanted to send something that I haven't um, presented to Jenny. But this has just been so wonderful, and I'm sure that everybody will agree with me that what everybody would really like to do now is taste a really great cup of coffee. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and honestly, you've given us ideas of new places to go in the city and some of them that I haven't been to and I consider myself having visited a lot of different <laughs> cafes as well. Oh, but there's there's so many, so many places that one can go to and support and not only the local roasters but the but the individually owned cafes so yes. thank you so much for joining us today jenny and just so that uh, all of you who are online can be aware we uh we are taping today's presentation so that if there's friends of yours that were not able to attend today and they would like to jump in and hear something of what we were discussing they are welcome to uh, come online I, i'll be sending uh jenny the next day or two, the uh, the YouTube link that uh, that you, Jenny, will be able to share with others. As well. so. And Carla, I do want to mention one last thing before uh, before we uh, finish off is that I have a coffee community group on Facebook, and so if you're interested in following my journey, learning more about. Um, the different world of coffee and the different coffees and roasters and coffee shops and any promotions that I have coming forward, please feel free to join me uh, as a member of our group or you can follow me on Instagram at Coffee with Jenny B because I've always got information and I also post about my uh, episode of my latest episode of my podcast and so um, it's just another way of connecting with me so I can share more about my love and education of coffee with you. Well, thank you. Thank you for all of that information, Jenny. And thank you to all of you who joined us this afternoon. And I hope I'm going to see you at the next Music and Ravens coming up. So take care. Have a wonderful, warm day. And see you again soon. Bye -bye. Great. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your coffee. Okay.